Hello, it's Nikki, and yes, it's true. Around 20 years ago, I was offered a 20 grand for the day job and then lost it in about 10 minutes. I didn't do anything illegal or do anything wrong. It was a legal issue though. Basically, I was offered this job for a whiskey commercial and it was on all the time. This is the annoying thing. So I know what it was like. I know who they cast, uh, but that's not what this is about. So I got offered the job and I could not believe it. To be in your early 20s and have the pro I mean I just couldn't take it in I remember it so vividly like tw 20,000 pounds for the day are you are you joking like what turns out it, it was a bit of a joke because 10 minutes later I didn't have the job anymore and this is why in order to advertise whiskey in this country, in the UK, you have to be over 25. And I wasn't. And my agent submitted me, didn't realise. It was, it was one of these things. It was a mistake. And I have to say, it stung a little bit at the time. And, you know, there's no point in any of these situations going into a blaming situation. And... I guess this is something that I really noticed early on, that it was okay to be a bit frustrated. And I think I'd had like two or three recalls by this stage. So it had been quite an intense, I mean, it was a short period of time, but quite intense, you know, going in, seeing the casting director again, seeing who was going to play my mum and dad. And I, I felt like I had got the job. And it turns out I did. But... What I can take away from that moment, after having that initial um, disappointment, was what could I then take from it? Because at this stage, I'm 42, at this stage in adulthood, it can be easier to not take responsibility for where we are right now and make some moves. And I know everybody is not in the position to be able to, to make moves or make decisions, but certainly this stage of life, it can be very easy to get cozy, to become a bit familiar, to get stuck in a routine. And I, I know this myself because I've got small children at home and a lot of the times, you know, pretty much every night I'm here, I'm doing bedtime, um, I'm very much rooted to my home. And I had that foresight in my 20s that I had to come to terms with this story because otherwise it would have a negative repeating effect on me throughout my entire life. And that would become the thing that I spoke about. Oh, that job. And I sense the irony of me telling you this now, but hopefully it'll be useful. That sense of me saying, oh, you know, I got that job and like, or, you know, I could even go into all of that. All agents are a nightmare or uh, it's so unfair or the government or all of these things. And yes, I had a couple of days of, disappointment and I got the recall fees which were 50 quid each and that compared to 20,000 seemed like a very small thing but it was fine and and we move on but I learned very quickly about the importance of reframing this moment and so here's what I did the fact that I had been so close within uh, I was going to say spitting different distance. I don't spit. I don't spit, darling. Uh, yeah, I'd been so, so close. I decided to realize and bathe in the possibility of the fact that therefore it was possible. It was possible because I got the job and had that not been, uh, the age not been an issue, I would have gone and shot the job and had £20,000 in my bank account for one day's work. And so 
what I decided to do was to accept that as a possibility, to accept the fact that this job came from nowhere, seemingly. It was like one of the biggest jobs uh, in terms of finances that I'd ever been to. And I also thought, I am in my early 20s with very little experience. And already, if I'm in this conversation of somebody being willing to, and this is without negotiation, it wasn't me just saying like, yeah, I think I'm worth, you know, 20 grand for a day rate. That was not the case. That was what was on offer. And I just thought, well, if I'm doing this in my 20s, then I'm not going to stop now. And I'm going to see that there is possibility everywhere. And I learned that so early on in terms of acting is that you never know what's around the corner. You never know what email is going to drop into your email box. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know how somebody's path is going to cross yours. You never know how... um, something that you did five years ago comes back around because somebody saw your post on Instagram. Like the possibilities are there. We have the technology, we have the potential to create networks. And so we have to be very careful about what we're holding on to and what our beliefs are. And I knew for a fact, I was not going to let this very near miss govern how I worked and how I built a career going forward. I also had this in a very different way recently where I decided to stop telling people that I was tired. And this is a really small thing. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't to my close friends and family. They'd be like, oh my gosh, she's still tired. She's still going on. Has she got anything else to say? Um, But the, the, the thing was, is that it becomes so part of my identity That was the first thing I was telling people. And I have so many other things that I would rather talk about apart from being tired. And so I want you to think about any of those niggles, things that people said to you, things that you've collected over time, old stories, basically anything that feels a bit crusty, outdated, old, Uh, not a true reflection. And I want you to make a decision today to reframe with it and do something about it. I mean, clearly I've never forgotten that story because I'm telling you it today, 20 years later. But I also know what I have, and I've never done 20 grand in a day. I've done it in two days on a two day shoot. Uh, But that's fine. It's just another day of my working life. It's all good. Um, But it was really a a moment to see what was possible. And if we choose to see what's available to us and to be ready for those opportunities, I mean, the world's your oyster, honestly, because people are looking for you. And I know I always say it, um, and I don't ever want to sound like a, a dodgy crime drama, but seriously, people are looking for you. Your exact combination, who you are, what you're all about, they are looking for you. So make it easy for them. Cut anything out of the way that is just lingering there, that is not showing your best self. It's so easy to go into that default thing of, you know, being a bit moany or, you know, talking about the weather or all of that stuff. And equally, I'm not saying go in with that kind of glaze, hi, (laughs) where you creep everyone out. I'm not saying that either. But there is so much space and capacity and potential for interesting, juicy conversations. And sometimes when I know somebody is not necessarily into the small talk, like I'm not either, I love, I've had the most incredible conversations on buses, in local shops, in a queue, all of it, because I'm open to it. Um, I hope that has ignited something in you today and it will give you that permission or that invitation to release it and get rid of it. You don't need it. You don't need it.